Hi everyone, I'm Adrian, that's Philip, that's Jay, we're from Audio Excellence Canada. And today we're going to talk about one of our favorite speakers, at least one of my favorite speakers. I don't know what these guys are going to say because, as usual, nothing is scripted. You, we don't, you gave we don't, us a script. No? no. Show me the script. Um, uh, this, is like the impeachment, the script. this is like the impeachment thing. Show me the script. <laughs> there is no evidence. It's a perfect speaker. <laughs> um, as usual, uh, we, don't, we don't share our thoughts uh, before we do the video, so this is all very much impromptu and, and unscripted. Anyway, uh, so today we're going to talk about the Wilson Audio Yvettes. Uh, just a bit of background. Uh, the Yvettes came out, I guess, about two, three years ago. Um, it sells for $25,500. US uh, It's actually derived from the Wham, the Alexia, and the Sasha 2. It uses the same tweeter as the Sasha 2 and the Alex. Uh, the Alex is uh, $139,000 um, Canadian. I think. Um, it's also made using primarily the X and the S materials. And these are materials that Wilson Audio uh, invented, ma has it manufactured to their specifications. The S material specifically is a material that um, Wilson uses in most, if not all, of their speakers, specifically in the mid-range area because it, it just works so well for their particular mid-range expectations. Uh, it's a 1-inch tweeter, 7-inch mid-range, and a 10-inch woofer. Rated 86 dB sensitivity and a back breaking 175 pounds each. Oh, wow. All right. So the last video, Philip went first. So, uh, oh, no. Jay, why don't you go first? Your turn. Your uh, turn. Jay, why don't you start by just saying what electronics and, and system we're using? Okay. So, in the previous video, uh, we did a comparison between the Hegel H390 and the MA352. And just so you guys know, they both disagree with me. They like the Hegel, I like the Macintosh. Yeah, They're but, wrong. Go check that video out. They're wrong. Anyways, uh, and we were using, so we were using both integrated amplifiers. We had the uh, Lumen T2 analog out using the internal DAC and streaming capability on the Lumen T2 uh, running into the integrated amplifiers. And you, we were S testing down, the- Slow down, slow down. Sorry. Can't hear you. Ooh, we were using the- Too much coffee, events. Jay. Oh my God, I'm hyper today. Um, so anyways, um, and so we were using those two mainly, but over over time we were we listened to it uh, with the Di Diagostino, uh, momentums and uh, progression monoblocks, as well as many different amplifiers, ME3, A900. You know, we, we had quite a bit of yeah, time with them. Uh, well, if you guys separate, you can also see the MSB DAC behind them. The street DAC. Right. Oh my God. And then to Jay's uh, right, there's the clear audio statement turntable that we use as well. So so. This is part of a system that we use all the time as, as, as one of our references, one of our big references. Yeah, so um, aside from the extra listening session that I did yesterday, um, pretty much familiar with the sound. Um, it's, it's, it's a classic Wilson audio sound, in my opinion, that um, uh, grip. So, so, so I think the, the comparison output here is Sonos Fiber, for example, has this more, um, uh, how do I say it? More warmer, more luscious, more um, a little, yeah, like, little, yeah, bit like, like yeah, yeah, like um, how do I say it? More romantic sound in a way. I like to call it more beautiful. Yeah. Okay. More beautiful. Uh, organic. No. More <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> um, whereas the Wilson Audio, what I really like is that it's very, very neutral. It's very, very, um, at least to me, very, very neutral. The bass is fast, tight, um, and. I'm a little bit biased here. I mean, I'm actually a lot biased here because um, one of the first speakers that I ever uh, laid my eyes upon was the Wilson Audio Sabrina. I said, you will be mine one day. So. And by the way, he's not joking. He came to my office a few <laughs> days ago and said, Adrian, I want to buy the Sabrinas. I don't know when, <laughs> but I want to buy them. Can you find out what the staff discount is? And I talked to him about for it's different reasons. 20%. For yeah, so yeah, for different reasons I talked to him about but he may still end up buying them. So I, 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 uh, I take Adrian's advice and I do a lot of savings. So um, I thought, you know, maybe if I save a little bit more, you know, I mean, if I save like five, uh, five bucks a day, <laughs> maybe in five years. <laughs> the, real, the real issue is you can't even really find a used pair because yeah, it retains yeah. its value so well. Yeah, so it's, it's not it's very, very, yeah. I mean, I saw a used pair that was selling for almost like the full price. So. Um, uh, hopefully my price is better than that, but, but back uh, regardless, to the he, he talked huh? back to the event. Yeah, back to the event. Uh, but anyways, he talked me out of it and um, I'm saving more um, for our house. So, uh, and, and, and then in any regards, um, uh, uh, the vets are a step off from the Sabrina and uh, they've 
to me, uh, the Sabrina is like a Porsche, right? It's something that I can look forward and it's a, something that I can achieve one day. Whereas the Vets is something like, like a Ferrari. It's like more over the board. Like, do I, do I need it? No, but do I, it's like, a, is it like a dream? Like, is this something that I want to see in my space? Definitely. And uh, it's all across the board, the mid-range, the, the high frequency, uh, the bass. It's, to me, very neutral, very, very revealing of the components. And um, uh, some, a speaker that I can wholeheartedly say you don't need a subwoofer with. Uh, and I can very, say very few uh, speakers, you know, uh, get in that category for me. So you're saying you didn't like the speakers? No, I'm saying I love the speakers. So, so you didn't like them, but you love them. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't love them. I I admire them. Like oh. in the morning, I come in when the agent's not here. You know, he goes out uh, uh, for a run. I just look at them, go like, oh, why must you exist? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, for for me, it's it's a highly biased, uh, uh, you know, uh, review here in a sense um, or impression because. Um, it ties in with me very emotionally in terms of what I experienced in the beginning of my audiophile journey and what I want to achieve at the end of the day. Um, it does all things that I like. I mean, um, and most things I like. Large sound stage, very good imaging, um, very spotlit, uh, very revealing of the components. Um, and it has this, I, I, something I like to call an American sound. Okay, yeah, that's good. It's, it's very, very fast, grippy, honest, um, like, it's just amazing. I mean, I don't, I don't know what, what else to There say. are no real weaknesses. There's no real weaknesses. I mean, it's, it's really hard for me to nitpick at, at a speaker like this. And also, it's really hard for me to compare. I mean, if I would compare to some of the simple comparisons like vocal speakers, um, there's really no comparison because for me, right, I know some people like the vocals better or Martin Logan's better or, you know, panel speakers or whatever it is. But for me, it, it, the Wilson Audio does things that no other speakers do. And that is have that fine line of detail versus the, uh, you know, just the borderline of being bright, right? And and it, it just falls right under my radar of, of being my type of sound. That's, yeah. And maybe I'm highly biased here because I work here, right? And, and I hear it every day. I'm just like, oh my God, this is, this is my... So it's pretty safe to say if you watch my reviews, if you, uh, you know, care about what I say, then uh, it's safe to say that, you know, my reference line is probably the Wilson Audio Cell because that's what I find neutral. That is what I so find... So you find that the high frequencies, because you have really good hearing. I do. Uh, extension all the way up, you know, to 20,000 hertz, you actually hear a very smooth response all the way up to there? Yeah, I do. Yeah, because you know my hearing sucks. Yeah, well, I, I actually tested for the reason he's saying this is because I actually have a record, a medical record uh, that I went and tested. Um, you know, he wouldn't be saying this if I didn't have it on paper. He would be like, "Your hearing sucks. Go get a tested." <laughs> no, uh, I'm just joking. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I, don't, I don't know what else to say. I mean, you put a tube amplifier or hybrid, it sounds tubey. Um, if you put a solid state, it sounds grippy, fast. I mean. It, it's just very, very good. Okay. <laughs> okay, your turn. Okay, Philip, My turn. Um, no, I probably have maybe mentioned this before, but uh, I'll just give a little background to my Wilson Audio um, history and experience. I hated them. Now, I sometimes say this a lot about certain things, but when I worked at American Sound, um, we had Watt Puppies there, Watt Puppy 5s, and they were horrible. I really disliked them. I mean, they did all these really amazing things, but I didn't like how they presented themselves and that tweeter drove me crazy. It was so bright. Uh, it made everything more real than real and I disliked that. I really disliked that. And as you can see, my reaction to the Wilson Audio, audio research experience of American Sound back in 95 was to go directly into big horns with single-winded amps and, you know, back to the turntable. So that was my experience. And then, of course, Audio Excellence picked up, um, started to sell uh, Wilson Audio speakers and actually turned me away from the store because I, I thought that they had turned to the dark side. So back in the day, I stopped going uh, as a customer or as a client 
uh, to um, uh, audio excellence when I was still a consumer. And so for a little bit, that was my impression. And I was not gonna be sucked in with um, uh, Wilson Audio. And then I started working here three years ago. And the first thing I heard was the Sabrina. And I'm like, what is that? Just like Jay, that's why I made him listen to it when he first came to the store. I said, this is gonna, this is gonna blow your mind. And so my ideas on it have totally changed. And now I understand more about what Wilson is doing. And it's really quite an amazing thing. So I heard all the same things Jay, Jay's heard basically about this speaker. And in my opinion, it's an extremely neutral speaker, neutral sounding speaker. It doesn't exaggerate anything. Um, and it scales so effortlessly. In other words, you can be playing it very soft. It's everything there. And then the music can actually have extreme dynamics, uh, symphonic music, classical music, and it will scale instantly without any hesitation, it doesn't hold anything back, and suddenly it, 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 the nature of the sound that you get changes depending on how it was recorded. In other words, soft passages are silky smooth, and then when it needs to be dynamic and forceful, it suddenly becomes dynamic and forceful in a way that impacts you right here in the chest. It really does that very well. Um, and then when you turn it up, it, it, there's no strain, there's zero strain. There's so little wrong with this speaker. Um, every time I listen to it, I'm impressed. Uh, One of the very, very few speakers um, I felt in the beginning that actually impacted me physically. Um, yes, yes. It's because you've never heard the show in Vegas, man. Oh, you yeah, gotta yeah, hear yeah, the yeah, show yeah. in Vegas. Yeah. Um, uh, what else can I say about the speaker that is different? So, uh, there's a there's a bit of when I do when I do a sales presentation of either the Wilson or the Sonus Faber, the way I like to describe it, it, it that really simply encapsulates the, the major differences or the major characteristics of the two sp speaker lines. So the Sonus Faber homage. Uh, uh, range has a speaker called the Serafinos, very close in price to this. And they're very comparable in performance levels. And as Jay was saying, um, you know, there's a certain, well, as I was saying, there's a certain beauty about the mid-range in the um, Sonus Faber. And so when you look at that, I like, to I like to tell people that the Sonus Faber is sort of like a female version of a speaker in that it has certain attributes which you could kind of ascribe to what a woman you know the essential difference between a man and a woman a woman has certain curves and uh softness that's what we normally associate you sound so pervy right now i, I know even... I know it's a bit weird <laughs> but yeah the wilson speakers have so they're like masculine so if if there's a if i mean they're equal, but so, you know, male and female, and that's the way I look at it. Wilson Audio is more of a masculine speaker. Not so much that it doesn't have all the other attributes, but it has a kind of, like, authority that is pervasive. And so when you hear it, 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 it has this kind of, uh, I don't know, like, you know, because men are stronger than women in some, you know, physical strength. So the Wilson has that kind of a physical strength. And it's not a really, you know, big, big, big thing, but that is part of what I hear. So I tell people, you know, you know, you're looking at those two speakers and that's a simple way of looking at it. One is a little bit more feminine. One is a little bit more masculine. So um, my question is, what happens if uh, to a person that uh, defines himself or herself as it? You know, gender thing. neutral? Is it no, yeah, gender neutral. What speaker is that? We don't have one. That's a panel. <laughs> That's um, a panel. Actually, I, 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 I do yeah. have a caveat with the What's Wilson that? Audio that I just remembered. Um, uh, poor recordings. It, it just won't do it. Oh, so, yeah. Um, <coughs> the Wilson is brutally honest. Um, so if you have bad recordings, it doesn't... It will not, it will not present it in a way that you'll like it. Yeah, it's not very forgiving. So... Um, Often in my reviews and, and, and in the budget section, um, mm -hmm. when I review like $2,000 or $500 bookshelf speakers, yep. that's a big part of uh, the budget line. Like a lot of people don't 
play or as serious as we are. So obviously the speaker is for like very serious people. And so when you play a uh, very well recorded recording, then you will reap the benefits, like every single bit of that <laughs> recording, you will re reap it. But at the same time, if you play a poor recording, you will hear every single wrong thing that's going on in that uh, recording. So one of the things, the, another one of the big ways of how those two companies, Sonos Faber and Wilson treat um, unwanted or, or resonances, all the boxes, the speaker boxes will resonate. And um, Sonos Faber specifically tunes their box designs to take make use of that resonance to kind of create a beauty about it. That's one of the secrets. And with Wilson, I know that they actually encouraged the box in their d design to shift um, those resonances into an areas that are not as affecting to the music that's being presented. So they're in an area where we don't hear it as much. Um, and that's one of the secrets. That's why it's so neutral. That's why it's so revealing. And so one fights resonance, one you, plays with it. You well, one, it, one, it. one shifts like, yeah. Okay. It, yeah. It, 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 the resonance is still there, but yeah. it's to an area where we don't hear it exactly. as much. And yeah. the other makes use of it. Yeah. So I will say this one thing though. When I listen to the Yvettes, I think like, wow, that's really good. And then when I listen, well, what, what's, what's what, I'm trying, what I'm trying to say here? Every time I listen to a Wilson, I love it. And then I, so I hear the Sabrinas and that's really good. And then I put the Yvettes on, oh, that's really, really, really good. And then, but I've heard the Sasha DAWs and as good as the Yvettes are, it leads you thinking like, what, well, how could it be better? And then you put the Sasha DAWs on and it's like, oh, that's oh. better. It's so unfair. It's not. It's you know. It's it's you know. It's it's unfair because my wall is not that deep. <laughs> One day. <laughs> One day. Okay. Uh, okay. So we got to wrap this up real quick. So um, the guys have basically covered most everything there is to cover about the Wilsons. I will say um, we, we will be uh, releasing a video one of these days if Jay ever gets to Jay and Jerry ever get to finishing it. We 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 did a video about. Uh, 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 about Wilson Audio and why there's quite a bit of controversy among many people out there. Um, but if you look at the evolution of Wilson, you can actually ex extrapolate that also to most companies in the industry uh, from the 70s and the 80s and so on, how m if the companies are still around, you'll see how they've evolved in, in the way the sound is reproduced and um, uh, from early on till today. So Wilson's uh, tweeters, for example, today uh, are silk dome tweeters as opposed to early on when they were using inverted uh, titanium dome tweeters uh, that uh, were, were specially made for them by Focal. Um, and, and with the uh, use of the silk domes, the, the high frequencies are still very airy, but not anywhere near as sharp or, or as potentially bright as uh, the earlier speakers were, especially if you don't use um, um, well-matched electronics to it, cables, and, and of course, if your recording sucks, it, it really highlights it. Um, um, just to highlight a few things, the it is a full range speaker. I, this morning when I tested it, if, if I remember, I'll, I'll, I'll give the snapshot to the guys. I measured the speaker very quickly and, and uh, uh, using a test tone and it was all the way down to 20 hertz. It's all the way down. And, and, and so um, if your room can sustain that, you'll get great bass. Um, the, the, um, the note that the guys made about how it, it can be very revealing, it's also very true. Having said that, <clears throat> I don't find it um, clinical in the sense that some some they mentioned some speakers and and they're all very highly regarded speakers that we don't carry but we, we, we have good regard for them but there are some speakers that um, will tear to shreds uh, um, uh, tear your ears to shreds if you're using a recording that's not great uh, I don't find that with the Wilsons you'll hear that the recording's not good but um, for me anyway I can still enjoy the music uh, even if the recording is not particularly great. Um, so for me, thankfully, I, I, I very much enjoy the, the, the events. And then one last thing um, that the guys mentioned when you go from one model to another <clears throat> in the Wilson line, 
uh, almost always you will find that there's more just when you think, oh, this is it, there's really no weaknesses, then you hear the next model and go, wow, how is that possible? Um, this was something that was um, <clears throat> laid very clearly to me um, uh, not all that long ago <clears throat> when we delivered a pair of uh, Alexis to a client's house. And the Alexis are six feet tall, roughly you know, 600 pounds, some ridiculous amount of weight. And um, hear that speaker and suddenly... You, you are in the presence of performers. It's just a stunning capture of, of just being there. Um, uh, uh, and, and then you come, you know, come back and you listen to, you know, the next best thing, which is the Alexia, and you go, wow, what a letdown. And meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, if you hadn't heard the Alex, the Alexia will drive you crazy and go, wow, how's that possible? And so, so this is one of the uh, amazing things about Wilson Audio. They're very consistent all the way through. The tonal quality is the same uh, or very similar. There's definitely uh, uh, capabilities all the way through, just more. But it's that more, that, that magical more that just brings you to another level, more so than almost any other brand of speakers I'm aware of. And in fact, so much so that in many cases of different brands of speakers, you might find that a lower level sounds better than the more expensive uh, model. We've all had experiences like this with different speaker brands, but for me, not with Wilson Audio. And I'm not saying this because I'm biased. Uh, I'm biased because I like Wilson so much. Is that the way, the right way of, of putting it? In, in essence, my, well, bias comes, no wrong, my, my bias comes from uh, owning the speakers ever since I was 18, 19 years old and with my hard-earned money, uh, buying them, uh, um, uh, and 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 choosing them for myself. So anyway, that's our uh, take on Wilson Audio. If if you never had a chance to hear it, strongly recommend it. As usual, your mileage may vary. You you'll have to hear it for yourself. But I, I can say with with certainty that again, if it was my desert island scenario, uh, it's one of two speakers I would take: either Wilson or Sonus Farber. Uh, almost no other speaker will do it for me. Uh, any other, any last words? So I just recently did a demo for someone who came in to listen to PS Audio, and I actually made them listen to Macintosh because we had it set up. But we were using the Avets, and both he and his friend have very similar equipment. They have PS Audio Stellar stuff, um, the, the the gain cell DAC, and the S three hundred amps. And so they're sitting there, and I'm playing them a few things, and nothing like really super audio file or anything like that, but. You know, good music, well well produced, well recorded, and their jaws just dropped. And they're listening to the speaker. They couldn't believe what they were hearing. They they thanked me, and they just had smiles on their faces. It was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. This is one of the reasons why it's really nice to work at the store because you get that kind of experience. You see people come in, and they are hearing something that they never thought possible. And especially when you realize that these speakers are like three feet tall. Yeah, talking mm -hmm. about jaw dropping, um, the the amount, uh, the 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 distance between how much it drops yeah. varies depending on the speakers. So yes. the way I like to put it is, I heard a tune tot and I was like, oh. like how? Like first of all, it's a bookshelf speaker. It's just, God damn! Like it's, the the size and the sound is just not match. Like it's like what? And it's um, I go like ah, oh. and then I hear the Sabrina. It was like. Uh, and then it goes the next one. Uh, and then you're just, just 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 drop more and more. I'm trying to know. I want to see it go down to the floor. Let's try. <laughs> well, let's get a uh, Chronosonic in here. Oh my God. All right, guys, uh, let's wrap it up. Uh, as usual, uh, uh, if you like uh, the video, please subscribe, uh, share it, uh, uh, and uh, turn on the notification, comments, uh, emails, uh, uh, feedback. Uh, you're welcome to send emails directly to us or leave the comments at the bottom, and we'll try to get back to you quickly. Um, and we'll make a list of um, uh, uh, the system that we've used and anything else that you might have uh, in your minds. Please let us know. Um, this I'm Adrian Villa Jay. We're from Audio Excellence Canada. We'll see you again next time. Bye bye.